Before I met Heather and learned about the Front Door Initiative, I was facing eviction, mostly due to COVID. I didn't work for six months. I didn't know what to do with anything in my life. Everything was just falling apart. I was lost. Where I would be if I didn't get hooked up with her at the Front Door Initiative, I'd probably be on the streets because I wasn't working at the time and I couldn't pay my rent. And she helped me out a lot. She kept calling me back to make sure everything went through, checking on me. They treated me like a human. They treated me like, a, like I was their best friend. So the Front Door Initiative was started in 2018 through a grant with the Jefferson Regional Foundation. Um, and it was aimed to address the social determinants of health needs for patients that come to the Jefferson Hospital Emergency Department. Social determinants of health actually account for 80% of someone's overall health. I like to think of them as like a three-dimensional web around a person. So they're all the factors outside of someone's clinical condition that impacts someone's health. So that could be the community that they live in, the safety of that community, the safety in their household, their access to transportation, their access to food sources like grocery stores, their financial security, the housing stability as well. Um, so there are a lot of different factors outside of someone's clinical condition that impact their health. Community health workers can address the social determinants of health by really being that support system for a patient. They offer their knowledge of the resources that are out there. There's a lot of people that don't know all the resources that are available to them. We also work with the emergency department to make sure that nurses, techs, everybody in the ED knows about social determinants and that the front door is there as a, an option. I think the one trait that's pretty required in this job is just to have a natural ability to connect with people, being genuine and empathetic towards somebody else. I think people can really see that and hear that initially when you when you reach out to them. She just said, like, I just I just need you to listen. Just tell me what, you know, do you need anything? What is and I I think I just like burst into tears and I was like, I just need everything. Like I have nothing, I don't know what I'm doing, I don't know where I'm going, I don't know how I'm gonna get to work, I don't know where I'm gonna work, I don't know where I'm gonna live. At that point, I just quit. I was like, this house is so moldy. Shane and I have severe asthma. I'm breathing in mold every day, I can't go in the basement. I'm just done. Like I need to find a new place to live. Like I just didn't have anybody to talk to. And I think that's what made me like really open up because she said she wanted to listen. We were able to have a donor give her first month's rent and a security deposit. We were able to get her car fixed. Um, we were able to have some food delivery sent to her. And we were able to prevent her having an eviction on her record. With all that stress of trying to find a new place, trying to work overtime at Eaton Park and waitress to come up with more money, her kids weren't really going to have Christmas. So we were able to pull a couple of different resources together and be able to get her kids presents for Christmas. Whenever they dropped off the Christmas presents for the kids, I just, I cried every time. I've always wanted to just be able to give my kids more than I had growing up. And in that moment, I wasn't able to, but they helped me be able to provide for my kids. And that's all that I wanted. I was having a lot of panic attacks that were causing me to get really ill. It was like, I couldn't leave my house. I was scared for no reason. There'd be times I couldn't leave my house for a week. I lost my job and I was having trouble with rent. The previous doctor that I was seeing wasn't treating me right and I just felt like I wasn't getting no help there. Like, hey, we'll take care of you, you're done. You're out, of, you're out of your panic mode, go home, you know? One of the things is we don't want it to be just like a call center where we just hand them a resource and say, here you go. Um, what we wanted to develop was sort of a road to self-sufficiency for our patients, being that in the beginning, we'll do it for you and then in the middle, we'll help you, and by the end, we really want them to be able to do it on their own. When I finally wrapped everything up, he had gotten a new PCP, got on the right medication, hasn't had any more panic attacks, is back to work, and did get the emergency rental assistance for all of their back rent and all their back utility. Social determinants, they affect everybody, and there's not a really clear pathway to say, this is what you do, when you're facing an eviction. 
This is what you do when you're under financial stress. There's nobody that says these are the steps you take and often stress makes it really hard to find those steps that you want to take. The impact that we make is navigating those resources and providing a path forward with patients and really be there in their corner throughout the process. It meant a lot to me. Like I, I felt like somebody actually cared. I'm just ready to live my life and enjoy life now. Go out and actually enjoy the weather. Something I haven't done in a, probably a few years because of my anxiety. My girlfriend sees how improved I've been and you know, it's just, it's a world of difference. I'm loving life again. I was at the lowest point in my life and now I'm not lost anymore. I was just stuck and now I'm just, like I'm free. That's how I feel, I feel free and happy again.